We respectfully request the Sangha great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Kung thin dai du tang thin vi thư pha hội cập nhật thi hiếp chung sân thiện chiếng diệu phàm luân giao đạo ngã mùng như há liêu sân thoáng tư ly khổ đà là tơ How much the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one? Namo Sadanto Suche Do Ye Ola Hodi San Miao San Puto Se. Namo Darakha Toya Daya Ola Hodi Tamio Tambo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Ooo <laughs> O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shen Hua, all good monks and nuns, and all good new advisors, Ami Tofo. Chu Fo Pu Sa, Ching Liang Ta Shi, Shi Fu Shang Ren, Go Wei, Chu Chia Ren, Go Wei, Shan Chi Shi, Ami Tofo. Chị Phật Bồ Tát kính thưa Thanh Lương Đại Sư Hòa Thượng Kinh Hóa, Quý Thầy Cô và Quý Vị Thiện Trí Thức A Nhi Đạo Phật. Hello everyone, today is the 18th of November 2022. Uh, we are here in Go Forest to continue discussing the prologue uh, to the Avatamsaka Sutra. It was prepared by Master Ching Liang. Uh, it's an overview of uh, the contents of the dharmas uh, that we're supposed to learn from this uh, prologue. Uh, we are door number two, talking about uh, sutra, the stores and the teachings containing it. And um, particular, we are at where uh, in Mahayana, uh, in order, to become enlightened, we have a set of Dharma doors we practice. And uh, these practices are uh, what everyone does uh, uh, in the way to enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So, so far we are on slide 149, talking about the four, uh, as you wish, as you will, accomplishments. Uh, basically is referring to the four uh, ways for us to develop spiritual penetration. The roadmap 
to developing spiritual penetrations. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to get started by uh, realizing, by thanking all of you. I realize how difficult it is for you to try to follow the lectures every night. Um, it's hard work, and I, uh, it's for you to take time off, especially uh, many of you uh, are, have come from work. Uh, this is Friday night here in the United States. Uh, came from work, and even like I uh, understand there is a Chan class here uh, in uh, Go Forest earlier, and then, and then uh, now it continued with uh, the uh, Sutra lecture. So it's uh, rather uh, a long day for you. Uh, our Chan training is anything but uh, easy. Um, you know, so, uh, and, uh, so thank you for, for coming and thank you for staying. Uh, and also, uh, it's a Chan Chi, so we've been, we do have Dharma talks, I have lectures every night as well at 7.20 uh, for at least an hour to two hours. Uh, this particular tonight is supposed to go for about an hour uh, and a half. Uh, so please remind me, remind me if I'm going over time. I tend to lose track of time. Uh, and um, so it's uh, possible because uh, we get a lot of support. Uh, for me personally to come up here, it's, uh, it's a miracle because uh, uh, we have uh, to drive uh, and uh, our cars are getting older, for example, and uh, so uh, miraculously, somebody volunteered to take care of the maintenance of all our cars. Uh, and uh, it's just amazing the things that people have done on our behalf. And the technology, for example, behind all this, the intertemple, the video tapes, uh, and YouTube and uh, sound and uh, lighting and, and so forth. This is incredible. Uh, and by the way, today is Master Z's birthday. I understand. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Thank you, everyone. Um, okay. How old are you? Uh, you know, that's what happens in America. <laughs> Thank you. 56, Master. 56. That's old. <laughs> wow. It's not a whole lot of uh, leeway for us. Uh, okay, well, congratulations. I hope uh, you have a wonderful uh, uh, birthday. Did you have a party at lunch or? We we have a lot of birthday birthday cake and other gifts to master. Okay, okay, good for you. Uh, okay, and what else did, uh, am I supposed to talk about today? I forgot. Uh, anyone uh, uh, has any questions or comment? Oh, yeah, uh, a small announcements. Uh, also. Uh, it's funny that uh, it's also Master Z's birthday, but uh, today I thought I would like to officially announce, uh, make a small announcement. Uh, that is, I've decided to recognize the loyalty, the devotion, and the hard work of someone, uh, a disciple of mine. and. Uh, I, um, there's a lot of things I'm able to do. Um, uh, uh, it's because uh, not only of uh, your support and her, and her support and many people's support. So I've decided that it's time in order to step up her training, uh, that uh, I decided it's time to promote her to abbot. Uh, so this is our first abbot uh, of our group, the first female abbot. Uh, we're running out of men. 
sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to announce to you, it's to my pride and joy to announce to you that uh, she's now the abbot of Wei Maung Temple. Uh, Venerable Xian Xin, I'm right behind you there. <laughs> Actually, I've been thinking about that, and I kept, she kept on refusing and refusing, you know, since uh, I'm just like you, I never quit. <laughs> so I've been keeping at it and at it, and finally she says, okay, okay. <laughs> you sound like a re uh, broken uh, record. Uh, so she finally agreed. Uh, so now uh, she has to... Um, mm, a chance to uh, move on to the next level of training. Uh, our training, actually, for your information, is pretty, pretty more well, well rounded my, than the Chinese style of training. Uh, not only do we give you training spiritually, I, I warn you that in our, in our temples, in our people, they receive uh, training. Uh, I'm trying to Im imitate, emulate Master Shri Noha here all, on all the ten parameters. So part of the ten parameters is that some of the people will be receiving uh, uh, more advanced training, more, uh, shall we say, worldly training, such as executive training, leadership training, and so forth. Uh, so. Uh, like everything else, unless you put there in the position, unless you have the need, uh, it's very difficult to improve or to be trained. Uh, so, uh, so it's time to uh, show to you that uh, uh, women too are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> So I hope that you too will extend your support to her, like you have, and uh, and um, and uh, together uh, I'm actually very pleased in how big of a team we have become, uh, and uh, it keeps on growing and growing and growing. Mm. Okay, and that you all been improving very rapidly, which is uh, great to see. Mm -hmm. All right. Would you like to say anything, Venerable Xin Xin, as official, first official duties? Aha. Uh -huh. She's so touched. She lost her voice. Okay. Mm. Um, our training actually has a certain characteristic. Uh, it's no need to train you unless you have the need for it, okay? You cannot really be, receive good training until you have a need for it. So, for example, now she's in a position where uh, she needs really uh, to step up in leadership skills. Uh, so that's why, uh, that's why she has to assume the position. She has to be in that role in order for the real training to happen, uh, okay? And same thing, eventually, um, I plan to bring Master Z back as well and uh, uh, to give him more executive and, and leadership training as well. Uh, he's been doing well in Korea, even though I put him there and uh, with uh, no real training, but he's been doing what he's supposed to be doing uh, uh, and failing in many ways. Uh, but uh, but um, that's how it goes. Uh, it takes time. Similarly, you know, if uh, you're a paycheck and you're supposed to pay chark, you're supposed to come out and uh, so that you can learn how to be a paycheck. So in Mahayana, the real thing is you have to be there in order to really learn. Uh, so that's why she finally understood 
Uh, I've been very patient with her. I actually asked, I wanted her to become an abbot uh, six months ago, but she kept on refusing, refusing, refusing. Uh, um, all right. Um, when you have a real need, uh, the training can be very, very fast. It goes for you as well, uh, unless you see the need to learn, uh, to acquire the skills. Uh, when you see that, it's much faster to uh, improve. Uh, keep that in mind, okay? Here, back to slide 149. Mm -hmm. Here, this is the Buddhist secret in developing spiritual penetrations. And for our side of uh, the pond, we don't feel that we want spiritual penetrations. I personally do not want spiritual penetrations, okay? I don't feel the need for it. Uh, uh, and uh, whereas most people who practice uh, uh, meditation and Buddhism in particular in our world where well, we have a lot of tools uh, to develop. For example, we give you the four two hands and eyes, which is a very, very quick way to develop spiritual penetrations as well. Uh, but uh, we do it uh, uh, without uh, really hoping to have spiritual penetration because it starts with wishing for spiritual penetration. Hmm? Mm, that's what it is. Uh, you, uh, you, you begin with a desire for it, earnest desire for it. And then number two, you have to uh, practice vigorously. Uh, this is the uh, basis for, uh, for our Mahayana practices. Uh, we do everything with great vigor. Uh, number three, mindfulness. Uh, we are... Uh, we don't lose track of uh, the Dharma we're practicing, uh, of our desire, our goals, our needs. Remember the need thing? Okay, unless you have a need, then it's much easier to be mindful. And finally, consideration. Uh, that is, um, uh, you find out when you get there. Okay, uh, any questions or comments? Yeah. Yes. Uh, dùng, uh, uh, orange. Phật, uh, chúng con uh, xin thầy uh, nói rõ thêm về chánh niệm là bởi vì có rất nhiều cái sự hiểu biết khác nhau và thực hành khác nhau về chánh niệm. A Di Đà Phật. Mm. Mindfulness here, depending on your persuasion, depending on your teacher, uh, the Various teachers have diff various interpretations, uh, and, uh, and that's uh, because it uh, uh, because uh, of uh, their understanding uh, and their accomplishments. Uh, and so, uh, of course, that's why when you learn from so many teachers like you have, uh, you have different uh, different interpretations. Uh, for us, uh, we practice mindfulness differently. Uh, for us, uh, mindfulness uh, uh, is uh, uh, quite different from the way that the Hinayana teachers uh, uh, practice it. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, therefore uh, uh, mindfulness for us, we have various ways of practicing mindfulness. Uh, Never mind about uh, the exact details, each time is different. But for example, during the Chan Chi, uh, it's when you practice uh, uh, at least the first three, very vigorously, okay? So, uh, for example, uh, this lady here, young lady here, has been practicing uh, uh, fasting, okay? Uh, because of the fasting, uh, in that fasting dharma right there, some people might say, hey, wait a minute, it doesn't sound like meditation at all. It doesn't sound like, uh, 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 like a hard practice. It's more like uh, tormenting yourself, torturing yourself. But think about it. Uh, she's on her seventh day now, going on her eighth. 
Uh, she plans to stop at nine, started at three days, uh, her goal, and then she, she kept going and going and going. And so what is mindfulness in particular dharma? Huh? Uh, it's very easy to be mindful when you're hungry, because what are you mindful of? Yeah. Oh, the hunger and the pain and the suffering. If you're practicing meditation and you're sitting there and the legs are hurting, uh, what are you mindful of? The pain, yeah. <laughs> it won't go away, right? It's that the hunger is 24 hours a day unless you pass out. Right? And the same thing, the pain is there until you unbuckle, even after you unbuckled. Okay? So that's mindfulness for us. It's not talk. Okay, uh, it's uh, the Dharma as you practice it will make you more mindful naturally. Okay, yeah, compare that for example, I started practicing meditation by reading books on mindfulness because my, uh, uh, I wasn't taught properly by my master's disciples. So, I read all sorts of things, and I learned about mindfulness of eating uh, and by chewing 25 times, mindfulness of uh, the sunset, uh, which are also mindful. But, uh, but uh, the basis of that is that there's really no urge, no need to practice mindfulness. Whereas over here, the mindfulness you practice, our Dharma doors is the mindfulness you practice naturally. Okay? Okay, and therefore you become more mindful than something artificial. Okay, so the mindfulness, in summary, is um, for us, it's not something intellectual. It's something that as you engage in the particular Dharma door practice, you, or the way we teach you, the way we do it, uh, makes you more mindful, if you will. Does it help? Dạ thưa con hiểu như vậy không biết đúng hay không thành ra chánh niệm nói chung đó là cái sự tập trung focus một cái vấn đề nào đó. Yeah, it's not wrong. But as you uh, practice more, uh, it also not only uh, helps you concentrate, increase your concentration, but also many, many other things which are much more important that we don't uh, explain to you. We don't want to explain to you. If you really have uh, the practice, uh, if you really practice mindfulness, those things happen naturally. Okay? Yes, Wei Mountain. Thank you, Master. Uh, the responses or spiritual penetration, penetrations that have occurred during my cultivation have all been from not wishing them. They just as a result of practice. And you were saying before that um, wanting something prevents you from having it. So how should we understand the wishfulness here? The wishing. The wishing here, uh, you wish for uh, uh, as you will accomplishment, uh, not because of yourself. When I started, I started, uh, I started uh, practicing uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this Mahayana thing here. I didn't have any real guidance, and every single day is like one more day before we quit. Okay, let's try one more day, and then it's it's very unglamorous. Uh, it's like uh, endless tunnel. Uh, you you see no light at all, and so every day for me personal personally was just let's struggle for another day, and that if uh, if uh, Tomorrow, after I wake up, 
and uh, it's uh, I could quit, but not today. Okay, yeah. and and uh, but somehow I managed to survive day after day after day, yeah. and then and then all of a sudden I realized that I have this need of knowing where I was. How would you know? I said. If I'm going to spend some, some more time of my life doing this, I better know I'm improving. So I started. So there's a, there's a wish to improve, to know I'm improving. So there's a wish to know which level I was at. Okay? Uh, and so because of that, uh, I was able to eventually uh, figure out uh, how to recognize uh, the characteristics of each particular level, okay? And then verify it so that, uh, because this is a real danger, okay? because you could easily get fooled by, the, these, uh, these, uh, by your own ego. You think you're special, you think you're a lot uh, more uh, capable than you really are. Uh, so I did that. And then uh, next, uh, so, so I began to recognize, uh, was able to look at myself and recognize what does it mean to go from one level to the next and to the next, to the next. You recognize that and then you verify it, okay? So I did that for myself. And then next came the need to be able to recognize others' level. So I wish uh, f to be able to recognize all those levels. And because of that, because of that, uh, there's naturally this ability to look at people and recognize where they are. Uh, and that's uh, a form of, if you will, spiritual penetration. Okay? Actually, it's a sp sp special spiritual eye okay, that eventually in the future, you yourself too will need to have in order to teach more effectively. So you see, the wishing there to me personally is because, um, uh, because of the desire, the, the need to do it uh, in order uh, to help others like you're supposed to. Instead of this... Uh, this uh, where most people, when they, uh, when they meditate or when they do a yoga, when they do and so forth, uh, these various spiritual practices, they wish to have spiritual penetration because it's their ego. They wish it for this themselves. Okay? And because of that, um, um, there, there are two problems. Number one, uh, if you let your ego uh, uh, be in control and say that uh, I want it for myself because it's such a cool thing, I want to be better than others and so forth, uh, the yes, you'll be able to accomplish it, but uh, your accomplishment would be rather limited. Okay? Uh, and... Uh, and num number two, uh, you not only is it uh, limited uh, because of your greed, but furthermore, it is uh, uh, actually a much more serious problem. I, later, I, I just looked out, later found out, because I'm watching, I watch a lot of people, especially my master's disciples. Uh, and you will be stuck with these spiritual penetrations because you agree, because of your abilities. Okay, and that's why in our world, in our side of, of the pond, we, uh, I encourage my students not to worry about it. You know? uh, those people who are able to see this, they see that, they hear this and hear that, actually, uh, you don't need to be very high level. Uh, our, our process is to go higher first. You go at this level, People who are able to open their eyes and see this and see that, okay, uh, they get distracted. Uh, whereas, uh, so this will prohibit them 
from going higher, much harder for them. Whereas on our side, we'd rather be blind, we don't want to see anything. It's much faster for you to go up here. And when it's time, when you really have the need to have a spiritual penetration in order to help others, in order to do more good, then your, your ability would be much further, much deeper, much more powerful. Okay? Yeah. So that's our approach. Uh, we don't, uh, for wishing for us, uh, the wish is, uh, first of all, we resist. We wish to resist uh, the, the greed, the open spiritual penetrations. And like many of you uh, who came, uh, hoping to learn from me how to open uh, your spiritual penetration, I tell you flat out, I don't know how to open it. Okay? Nor do I wish to open it. Even if I knew, I don't wish to open it because it's a lot of my fun, it's a lot of uh, trouble. Uh, so you see, for, our, for, for, for us, uh, the wishing there uh, is uh, reluctantly wishing because we have to uh, do our jobs to help more, if you will, for others. That's a subtle distinction. that the Chinese uh, don't teach their own. That's why they tend to be stuck. Okay? Mm. The, does it make sense? Does it help? Mm. I said, sure, you're welcome to come and learn how to open your spirit penetration. There you go. There's four ways. There's four steps, four aspects. Go for it. Do as you wish. Okay? For us, uh, for us, especially in the Chinese world, the spiritual penetration is a lot, of, a lot of trouble. So we'd rather not have spiritual penetrations. Besides, there's so many of you who have spiritual penetrations. So we, you know, it's just ask you. You can tell us. Okay? Any other questions? Hmm. It's okay if uh, you you really for you want you want it go for it and then you open it and then one day you say okay I don't want it anymore and uh, keep that in mind if you can you find yourself not progressing anymore okay okay next one fifty already okay one fifty hmm. the next uh, Dharmas uh, of uh, this uh, road to enlightenment uh, is, uh, is the seven body shares, uh, the seven branches uh, of body of enlightenment. Okay? Uh, what are the seven uh, different uh, types of things we need? to do in order to reach enlightenment. Uh, you begin with selecting a dharma, and then you do practice it vigorously, and you have some joy that will derive from it. And then four, you're casting out. Uh, okay, number five, uh, uh, you practice enunciation, uh, number six, you, you practice samadhi, and number seven, you practice mindfulness. Okay, so those are the seven, seven body shares. There are seven types of things you need to do in order to become enlightened. Okay, so select a dharma. This is uh, very important. Mm, you start first by selecting a particular form of practice. Uh, and uh, so it refers to in your spiritual practice, you have to be careful about which particular uh, Dharma door you're choosing. Uh, so the first consideration is, uh, it's not so much, this is the way the Chinese do it, they say, I want to learn, let's say, 
Mm. That's a hua tou. Everyone knows a hua tou is a very powerful Chan meditation, a Chan Dhamma door that produced, a, uh, that will make, help you become enlightened. For example, Master Xu Yun, uh, the predecessor to Master, Master Xu Yunhua, uh, became enlightened through practicing Hua Tou. Okay, so just like a Dharma, because it's going to make you become enlightened. Okay, uh, and that's what uh, uh, usually people uh, are taught, people learn. But actually, uh, it's referred to the fact that uh, they also explain that it said may be appropriate for you as well, uh, for, for us. Mm. Uh, the selecting a Dharma here, let me remind you, let the Chinese do whatever they want. Let them practice Hua to, Let the Koreans practice Hua to, Let the Master Shi Hua disciples practice Hua to, because Master Shi Hua taught the Hua to as well. Uh, for us, uh, selecting a Dharma here is uh, to uh, practice what you told. Don't be stuck on a Dharma door. Uh, yes, um, the number one here assumes that you are able. It's called you have the Dharma selecting eye. You can see which one makes sense for you. Okay? Uh, the Chinese explain it elaborately. There's many aspects of this. But for me, it's too complicated. And it can be so confusing. Particularly when I look at the Koreans and the Chinese and the Vietnamese and so forth. Uh, they are also confused because uh, they uh, hear about all these big words and these things, but uh, they don't quite know how to pull it off. Right? Uh, for me, being too Americanized, I said, um, uh, so it's like a Dharma door is that you, this is, this, this is the, the ability to recognize what will work for you, what will bring you all the way, right? And so that's why when I first started uh, practicing with Master Shino's Dharma, we have so many Dharma doors. And so his disciple uh, 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 told me that uh, you need to learn to develop the, uh, the Dharma selecting eye. Okay? Zhe fa yin. Okay? Uh, so you, you need to be able to recognize which Dharma uh, we bring enlightenment with drama, the appropriate for you. Yes? Okay. But that's a theory. How do you know? There's so many Dharma doors. And I looked, later I looked, you know, I have, I could decide which one works for me. And then now I looked at uh, the Chinese, for example, they say, okay, uh, if uh, Hua Tou is a, is a, is a, uh, is a Dharma, is a powerful Dharma door, let's practice it. Then for sure it's going to, help me become enlightened. Yes? It makes sense? Right? Mm. Uh, but, uh, but, what I'm teaching you about selecting a Dharma, okay, or a Dharma door, is to do what your good knowing advisor tells you to. Don't decide for yourself because you really don't have the wisdom yet. Use the Dharma selecting eye of your good knowing advisor. How is that? Hmm? I haven't, I never heard this explained before like this or anywhere in a dictionary because it's so inefficient. These people, you, go from Dharma door to Dharma door, Dharma Dharma, you know, like Yunga and all these people. You've been to many temples and you go, you know, you, you invite so many teachers and one teacher to teach you this and then you follow and the next teacher uh, teaches you that and you follow it and then, uh, so you keep on jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping. That's no good, okay? And then you go to another, another person who says, I'm gonna not make that mistake. I'm gonna go, let's say, practice Huato only like the Koreans are taught, okay? If you want to do Son, you practice Hua To, okay? And then it doesn't work for them either. So what's the compromise? What's lacking is the fact that uh, you don't have the vision or the wisdom 
of the skills, of the knowledge of the good known advisor who says, this is better for you. So the, uh, that's why uh, the selecting a dharma is to follow your good known advisor's instruction. Do what you're told. You cross your legs, you cross your legs. Okay? And that's a better dharma selecting eye than relying on yourself. Am I making myself clear? Inherently in this process, the way that the Chinese explain it and the way the books explain it is that uh, you let your ego choose, select a dharma, which can be very dangerous, very ineffective. Okay? Yeah, so this is why, let the Chinese practice it their way. Let the, the Koreans practice their Hua to and the Chinese practice or Hao to. Uh, I, was, uh, I made that mistake as well. I practiced Hua to for a while too, following Master Shenhua's instructions. Didn't go very far. Didn't, uh, didn't quite, uh, didn't quite uh, uh, get anywhere. Okay? Uh, his explanation of Hua to to me, is not that good. Okay. It's not, not his specialty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so selecting a dharma here is uh, uh, to do what your good know and advisor tells you, and you vigorously practice it. Okay, and if you make progress, if you make progress, that's a key thing here. We're doing all this in order to become a better person, and then better, and better, and better, okay? So eventually, uh, as you vigorous practice it, and you do it right, you will derive some joy, okay, from your practice. The joy here, uh, the joy here comes from your improvement. The spiritual practice actually is fun. In our side, uh, okay, in our group, mm, mm, you must pay a price for having more fun, for improvement. Okay, in, in particular, if you are not afraid of the hard work, if you're not afraid of the suffering, that's how you derive more joy, more fun out of your spiritual practice. On the other hand, if you only seek to have fun constantly, like a lot of people, they go and practice mindfulness meditation and they smile, for example. Smile. Breathe in. Smile. Okay? Uh, that inherently, uh, a very popular uh, practice there for the entire world. <laughs> yeah. Smile. Okay? Uh, uh, and that's, uh, that's uh, um, not a very good form of giving you a chance to increase joy out of the practice, make the practice more joyful. And because uh, because um, you can't improve if you keep on dwelling on joy all the time. Mm-hmm. The joy here uh, uh, is increased because it's like a pendulum. Life is a pendulum. It's the ups and downs of life. Or the Taoist pra- practitioners to look at it as a pendulum. Okay? Uh, so, uh, meaning that life is bipolar. Okay? Meaning you, you go from one extreme to the other. You go from, from, mm, from pleasure to suffering and back and forth and back and forth. Remember, uh, if you are not 
and you know, don't know what I'm talking about. Ask some married people. Uh, you know, you go from joy to suffering, and then joy and suffering, joy and suffering, joy and suffering. Yes or no? I'm the only one. <laughs> right? Am I the only one in the world? That's marriage life, is that you go from bliss, marital bliss, to marital horror, misery. Yes? And as long as you hang in there, uh, it's, uh, it keeps going and going and going. Okay? Uh, and, and, um, and in particular, and this is, a, uh, this is kind of personal for me, many husbands complain to their wives, how come you abandon me and go to the temple? Uh, what about me? Okay? I work hard all week to, uh, to uh, contribute to family's finances, uh, at least pay attention to me. But they don't realize, you know, in the defense of uh, the many wives, important wives in our congregation, is that they come to our temple to experience a lot of suffering so that they improve. So their bliss here, as they improve to their bliss, they bring them back to the family, okay? They will contribute to more suffering to the relationship, but also will increase the bliss as well. You see? So it actually helps your marriage. Never mind. Uh, so, um, so the joy here is actually incremental. When you increase the joy from your spiritual practice, and that's how you also know that you're improving. Your family's joy also increases. Okay? Uh, and go ahead, Way Mountain, comment. Thank you, Master. I wanted to express my gratitude um, for your instruction yesterday, uh, helping me to recognize a middle way of learning from my wife. I am sorry. Would you repeat that, please? I wanted to thank you for your instruction yesterday, um, helping me learn a, a middle way Instead of going from one extreme to the other with my wife, now I can recognize opportunities to learn from her. Mm hmm. Very good. Uh, I also need a microphone here, a speaker here, so that I can hear it instead of being from hearing from all directions. And, okay, uh, would help in the future. That's a minor detail. Uh, all right, yeah, you're welcome. I don't know what he's talking about. Do you? <laughs> he talks in riddles. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's fine. It works for him. Hello. <laughs> okay. And so uh, when you cast out joy here and the next one, uh, 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 number four, uh, you, you remember even with the joy, you, need to, uh, you do some casting out practice, in particular when you, uh, you avoid, in order to avoid attaching to the joy, okay, to the dharmas. For example, uh, uh, I frown upon people uh, teaching you about meditation is pleasant, is pleasure. Am I smiling by, by uh, self-indulging, indulging yourself in things, uh, that's, the, that's not the proper dharma practice, okay? Uh, and so that's why uh, in order for you to become enlightened, okay, you cannot even attach to the joy you're experiencing, okay? So uh, in order for you to continue to increase your joy, to continue to improve, you need to let go of your attachments. This is a constant struggle for you because the ego says, wait a minute, I like this. I want to keep this, okay? And so that's why you have to be constantly casting out all sorts of attachments, okay? Uh, 
And number five, um, number five, if renunciation, uh, um, uh, renunciation here re means uh, means uh, you need to have some balance. Uh, uh, you don't want to, when you cast out here, okay? When you cast out here, there's a danger of you, in particular, when you practice the Hinayana. Uh, path or your teachers can tend to train you the way they train to train you will bring you in this problem uh, that unless you practice renunciation you'll be stuck okay uh, you get stuck pretty easily for the Hinayana which is for us in uh, Mahayana teachers we very we very concerned about it so sometimes we come across as uh, a little bit violent, okay? Because uh, like we concerned that the when you get the fourth stage aha, you will be stuck. Uh, because then, when you get the fourth stage aha, uh, the 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 joy uh, is incredible, and you continue to, to 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 cast out your attachment, but you don't realize there's an attachment which is extremely dangerous, okay? Uh, that's why you need this uh, renunciation where you don't attach to a uh, particular, uh, even though, uh, uh, even though you see it as no attachments, uh, actually you even have to renounce even no attachments. Okay? Uh, and this is the mistake that a lot of Hinayana practitioners have. And also, even in Mahayana, mm -hmm. when you get to uh, the pretty high level, you still have problems, like Master Xu Yun has a problem. Right? If he's alive, I would tell him, open your eyes, because closing his eyes is that physical manifestation of the lack of the practice of renunciation. You even have to renounce closing your eyes. Okay? And number six, uh, uh, that's how you, uh, you have to learn how to use your samadhi. Okay? Uh, you develop samadhi and you learn how to use your samadhi in order to become enlightened and or increase your level of enlightenment. Okay, and, and finally, uh, number seven is mindfulness, meaning that um, uh, you keep your mind clear, you are constantly aware of uh, your, uh, of your mind being cluttered, being obstructed, uh, and uh, and um, and uh, and you should uh, be mindful and dwell in your transcendental wisdom. Way Mountain. Can you say you. one more time? Hello, Master. Um, I just have a question in regards to number four and five, um, casting out and a renunciation. What is the difference between the two? Because it looks like it's similar to me. Mm. Uh, it, uh, it's uh, by degrees. Uh, casting out is you uh, recognize your attachments. Mm. And renunciation is you renounce, uh, you renounce uh, uh, your, uh, uh, you 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 renounce uh, you renounce uh, 
uh, you, you maintain a balance. You make sure that you are not attached to, uh, to, um, uh, to your understanding. Uh, renunciation here, uh, if you force me to explain to you, okay, uh, as uh, you study in school, or as you practice uh, meditation, you pursue your spiritual practice, uh, you develop a certain level of, of uh, understanding, a comprehension of wisdom, and that renunciation here refers to you even renounce that understanding, that wisdom. So for example, the four stage ahat have the uh, wisdom of being attached to nothing. So, but, so he says, everything is empty anyway. There's no me, there's no, there's no self, there's no others. Okay, that's true wisdom right there. But they don't realize that, that even that knowledge of no self, no others, must also be renounced. Okay, so the four enables him by casting out all the attachments. It, uh, it brings the practitioner to be able to realize emptiness of the self and the dharmas. Number five, when you get there, you even have to renounce even that knowledge. Okay? Uh, and that's what happens. The fourth stage, Ahad, fails to do that. He says, nothing matters anyway. I'm empty, you're empty. Uh, the world's empty, so I don't need to do anything. And that's wrong. That means you att he's attached to emptiness. Okay, so renunciation here uh, is to renounce even your own knowledge, your own wisdom. Renounce the attachment to your wisdom. Okay, which is very, very difficult to do because you are not even aware you're attached to it. The most glaring example is you, you talk to Forsei Jahat, they're all telling you because they cast out things after thing after things. They do so many attachments that they begin to understand emptiness. Okay? And so you explain to them and say, then they tell you what, you te what you're telling me is empty anyway, so I don't need to do anything about it. Okay? So that's why you, he, or she must still renounce that emptiness that he experienced or he sees. That's five. Does it help? You renounce your own wisdom, your own knowledge. You too. Thank you, Master. From Brady McBride, a two-part question. Master, isn't it an inherent human trait to seek happiness? What does happiness feel like without attachment? All right. Uh, happiness uh, is a temporary thing. Uh, you, happiness, this happiness you experience is always short-lived. Take the example of having a drink. How long does that happiness last? Or uh, the happiness of uh, taking drugs? Or the happiness from relationships? How, how long does it last? Okay, so yes, happiness uh, in general is desirable because, uh, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful break from our suffering, uh, but you know, what people uh, fail to recognize is that the happiness is very short-lived, and therefore, because it's short-lived, it actually is a source 
for your misery, meaning that you yearn for it. Not only you have your existing suffering, okay, uh, you achieve happiness, and after you attain happiness, now you create a attachment to that happiness, and therefore you actually are increasing your suffering. Your happiness is actually a source of pain and suffering for you in the future. So that's why in Buddhism, happiness is looked at it as suffering because it is the source of future suffering. Happiness being temporary, so the pleasure, the happiness is only temporary, but actually it breeds uh, increased suffering for you down the road when it goes away. Okay, so when is it okay to be happy? It's okay to be happy uh, when you have wisdom. Okay, meaning that uh, after you become enlightened, okay, it's perfectly safe to be happy. Before you happen, uh, before you enlighten, being happy causes attachments. After you are enlightened, being happy uh, can help you increase your wisdom. That's the difference. Ordinary people seek happiness because they don't know better. Hmm. Enlightened people uh, seek happiness because it helps them open the wisdom. They're not the same kind of pursuits. Did I answer both questions or not? Uh, on YouTube, Brady says, that helps, Master. Thank you. OK. Next question. Uh, thank you, Master, for teaching this profound dharma and this Avantapasaka field. Um, while hearing these um, uh, Bodhi shares, I think about how everybody has the Buddha nature and how also I have lived my life in trying to show compassion to others um, and to myself. And I try to give myself um, joy and I also try to give myself um, calmness and to cut out the need for joy and I try to find balance. But when I try to help others, these ideas of samadhi or mindfulness, I'm totally laying by the wayside because I don't believe that they are what the other person wants or needs. Um, by learning these bodhi shares, should our idea of compassion and understanding of others change? And should our goals for others change? You are describing what is called premature joy. Premature helping prematurely. You can't even help yourself, and yet you somehow convince yourself that you want to help others. You have no wisdom yet to even help yourself. How can you possibly help others if you can't help yourself? Who is the most important person in the world for you? You. No one else but you. And yet you can't even help yourself. You cannot convince me that uh, you can really help others when you can't even help yourself. Because uh, as long as you have the self right there, uh, can you really 
help others because you will that 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 intellectual concept of helping others is actually helping yourself. You are actually are not helping others. So that's called a spade a spade. Okay? You're not helping others. You actually are trying to help yourself. And this is a fallacy in the people concept. Like people like to do charity work, do philanthropy, uh, give to museums. I always chuckle at these rich people in LA, these uh, big people who give $100 million to help build museum, okay, to the board of trustees. And uh, they said, I will give you $100 million. I'll give you $200 million. And, um, and uh, the funds are there, okay? But I will release them. If you meet certain goals, and I, I always chuckle at that because it's clearly they're helping themselves. They're not helping a museum. They're helping themselves. They're, all they're doing is, uh, is uh, create joy and, and, and get what they want. Not, okay. And so this is so typical of worldly people. They talk big. They want to help others. Actually, ultimately, they're helping themselves. So you can't truly help others until you get rid of the ego. Okay, if you, if you can't even get rid of your ego, you can't really help yourself. And it was only after you are free your own ego, your selfish desires, can you really be taught to develop true wisdom? Because right now, as long as you have this ego there, it gets in the way of your developing true wisdom. That's why Buddhism is so hard to teach. It's so hard to train people, and that's why the Buddha said, no, 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 it's too much trouble, it's very difficult. These people don't get it. It's not a good use of my time. Okay? Uh, because it's very difficult to help you get rid of your ego. It's very difficult for you to do it by yourself. It's a lot of trouble for us to try to help you. Okay, so take the Hinayana approach. They go to the forest, they go to the mountains, they go to the valley, they be by themselves, and they can get rid of the ego, and then you run into the problem. Okay, and they're attached to the state of no ego that are discovered by themselves. Okay? And so that they, they uh, fail to be prepared for renunciation. So it's a very tricky, tricky thing. So the short answer to your question is that don't try to help others yet. You can't. You have no wisdom. When you have no wisdom, helping others is actually helping yourself. Okay. Uh, so, so, so that's why in Mahayana, we basically practice and practice and practice until uh, our teacher says, it's time for you to descend from the mountain. Don't do it prematurely. That's all. Don't decide, I'm going to help others. Yes, the aspiration to help others is important. should be your driving force behind this spiritual pursuit. However, uh, however, there's a better way to help others by uh, waiting for the go-ahead uh, 
waiting for the permission from your good no advisor that you can begin to help others. Okay? And then, uh, and then you practice samadhi. Uh, uh, samadhi will enable you to be at your best, to be at your strength, to resist, and to um, withstand the challenges or the obstructions from others. Uh, because uh, when you reach a certain level, uh, you basically are the ones who are obstructing yourself uh, unless you are able to dwell in wisdom, and that's mindfulness. Okay? Any questions? It's just be aware of these dharmas, that is, that you have to come back and revisit. All of us have to come back and revisit. Okay? All these seven body shares, or the, or the 37 limbs of enlightenment. Okay? Yeah. And the, uh, the proper way is known as the eight, uh, uh, the eight, ba uh, cheng dao, the eight uh, proper paths, okay, or the eight sagely way shares. Uh, and the Chinese has a pretty good, very good explanation there. Uh, that uh, we could, uh, it's, it's very, very, uh, very clear on how to uh, practice. Uh, the, the, the one thing that uh, you should have is a real struggle for most people to have the proper views. Okay? Proper views are the uh, foundation. Yeah, it's a starting point. And this is why, for example, uh, why is it in our, in our little world there's so few abbots? Uh, it's because these three people so far that have chosen to be abbots, uh, like the second patriarch, the Master Suinoha chose, is because mm, they have the proper views. So that when I have my back turned, I know that when people draw near them, they will also have the proper views. Okay, what are the proper views? That the wise abbots in our system don't have or fail in some areas. Okay, never mind the non abbots. They're even feeling more miserably, not to mention you, who are not even abbots at all, or vice abbots, or monks and nuns at all, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. Um, what are those things? You see, all these are so elegant, so profound, so deep, you don't understand, okay? The uh, proper views uh, for us okay, can be described in three things. Our creed that Master Shenhua taught us, that's the proper views. What are they? Dying of frost, we do not climb on conditions. Dying of hunger, we do not beg. Dying of property, poverty, not property, that too. We, uh, we do not seek, that's a proper use. As I mentioned to you, I look at my uh, teacher's disciples, only the second patriarch has a proper gift. I have 
many encounters with him, I like him because the views are so solid. The foundation is so solid. I call the foundation its proper views. And your attainment, what people, what the Chinese don't teach you, your attainment, how far you will go, depends on having the proper views, which is what we call in English, foundation. You need to build on the proper foundation. Your, your foundation limits how far you can go. So it's much more important to build a proper foundation to me than trying to improve too quickly. So that's why each of you will progress differently. But eventually, the one who progresses, progresses furthest is the one who has a proper view, so has a better foundation than the others. Okay, so all my three abbots, our three abbots, uh, their foundation is far better than the others uh, the, because of the three things. And we should change, by the way, in our creed thing uh, so that it's punchier, dying of frost. We do not climb on conditions. Dying of hunger, we do not beg. Dying of pop property, we do not build, I mean, we do not uh, seek. Okay? Just change your first line so that it uh, looks better, sounds better, it's easier to remember. You too. Thank you, Master. YouTube question from Diego Alfonso. Amitofo, Master, how can we dwell on wisdom? Is that the same as entering samadhi at will? Thank you. The wisdom we're referring to is uh, at all levels, depending your samadhi level, your samadhi uh, is associated with wisdom. So in our Mahayana practice, uh, we practice both samadhi. We teach you, train you both in samadhi and wisdom simultaneously. Okay, and that's very important for us because it's more a uh, more balanced spiritual practice. Uh, for 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 example, um, if you're not careful. Uh, you are, your practice is too uh, skewed towards samadhi, then when you do wisdom is inadequate, is inadequately developed, and therefore you get in trouble. Or if you, let's say, you are more uh, focused on developing your wisdom by, for example, learning from the books, like a lot of people do, they a lot of uh, Buddhist disciples, particular scholars, they love to learn the books, learn the principles, because principles are beautiful, are, uh, are fascinating. Buddhist principles are wonderful, wonderful. It's just fascinating to me. So deep, so profound. And that's, uh, so now you, you, you study too much on the principles and neglect the samadhi practice like scholars do. Uh, like most Buddhist disciples nowadays do, because no one knows how to train them in developing samadhi anymore, okay? Then uh, you, are, you have more wisdom than samadhi, okay? And that's not desirable either. Okay? So there should be uh, the proper balance between wisdom and samadhi. So in our practice, that's why we make you sit for a long, long time, like during a Chan Chi, you sit all day, 14 to 16 hours a day. And then at the end of the day, we speak Dharma for you. And after you speak Dharma for you, you have a chance to sit and let it take root. It's very, very clever. It really, really works. Okay. And then, so you, you, this is why we carry it 
to uh, your daily practice as well. When you come to the temple and you join our online classes, we sit with you for an hour, okay? And then we speak Dharma to you for Master Shinhua. Uh, he speaks Dharma in his, in his, uh, in his uh, side for 20 minutes. For us, we speak Dharma to you three times as much uh, so that you are wiser than they are. Okay? Uh, and it pays. Yeah? Yeah. It pays off. So far. Uh, so that's why you need to have the, uh, the balanced approach on both developing samadhi and wisdom. Did I answer your question? Yes. Uh, black. Master, um, how do we know if we uh, have improper views? You know you have proper views when you're not violating the views your teachers taught you. You are when you're not in violation of your teacher's teachings. Okay, that's number one. Number two, or when your teacher slaps you in the face, hits you in the head. It's a very quick reminder. So you need both. You too. Thank you, Master. YouTube question from Burke Demarici. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, Master. How can we know that it's time for us to leave the home life? And what should we avoid? I don't know. Because personally, I don't like to leave a home life. I don't plan to stay a monk for very long. So I'm a reluctant monk. You're asking the wrong person. Okay, you should ask from the people who have real wisdom. I don't have any real wisdom, so I can't really give you the advices about when it's a good time for you to leave the home life. Because I never plan to stay a monk for very long. I'm doing this reluctantly, okay? Because I must, not because I want to. And it happened that I have to be a monk in order to do what I do. I don't like it. So I, I don't want to, to, to teach that to you. I don't like being a monk. <laughs> These, these abbots and these abbots, these vice abbots, they have aspirations, they have true, they have true principles, they have true aspirations. I'm reluctant at what I do, so <laughs> I'm doing it because you're forcing me, okay? Because my teachers are forcing me. Yeah. It turns out, for me personally, I'm doing more, I have to find myself explaining more and more than I want to move beyond the Chinese teachings because uh, you are at the level where uh, regurgitating what the Chinese teaching these things are actually uh, not helping you anymore. So I'm reluctantly going out on a limb to say these things. I said, did I say that really? <laughs> I have no real wisdom. So, so every time I speak Dharma, I don't like it. Honestly, because I don't know what, what I'm going to say next. <laughs> and after I say it, I, I, most of the time I regret it. See, pay you and having a good time. <laughs> so it's like the hot seat. People, you know, in my, in, my, in, in my generation, people love to sit here and say, oh, I'm a Bible master, I'm, you know, a big shot. I have, you know, I have so much wisdom to give you. I'm telling you, to me, it's a hot seat. It's not a Dharma seat, but it's a hot seat because I'm uncomfortable, okay? I have no idea what's, what I'm going to say next. And you have a way of forcing me to say things that uh, I don't 
typically think of. Because you're weird. You're not normal people. Okay? Yeah? <laughs> so I don't know. I wish you luck. You should uh, talk to the real monks uh, who can uh, give you real ideals, real aspirations. Uh, maybe you talk to, uh, I wish you luck. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, yeah. we wait. You can ask any when you're ready. Proper thoughts. Uh, uh, proper thoughts here is uh, uh, you have the proper aspirations, okay? The proper discrimination, uh, and you keep in mind. The Buddhist teaching, especially the, non, no, the Four Noble Truths, life is suffering. It increases whether you like it or not. doesn't matter who you are. Uh, uh, the super successful people, uh, my entire life, uh, are driven by my generation uh, to be successful, and to, be, to be an achiever, to be an overachiever. Okay, and it's still it's only suffering. <laughs> so, uh, so the so this, you know, it, the suffering increases. It's multi-layered. It's called accumulation, one layer on top of the other, on top of the other. Uh, okay. Multi-dimensional, and and uh, and that's why you should reduce your desires. Okay. Uh, and uh, you should guard against anger. Those are the proper thoughts. If you guard yourself against those, uh, uh, do those things, then they are the guidelines of having proper thoughts. Okay? So it's many aspects of it. It's worth Remi uh, reminding you, because the Chinese is a lot more detailed than we have in English explanations, okay? It's worth remembering, worth reminding ourselves. Proper aspirations. Yes, like earlier the question is, I want to help others. That's called proper aspirations, okay? Mm -hmm. But you should temper that with, uh, in order to help others, I need to aspire to get rid of my ego first. And after I get rid, get, got, got rid of my ego, then I need further instructions in order to unfold my real wisdom. Okay? And then after you unfold your real wisdom, then you need to develop the skills to really help others, the strength to really help others, and so forth. Okay, so those are the proper aspirations. Yeah. Proper discrimination, meaning you need to be able to discriminate good from evil. Okay, and uh, you should uh, have, uh, you should be mindful of the proper principles. And this is why when you practice a Chan Chi here, you sit for a long, long time, you enter samadhi, you develop concentration, but then we teach you to be mindful of how to use the concentration, okay? And how to use that to unfold the proper wisdom. So, so that's what we teach you, the proper principles. It's so important for you to listen to the proper principles, okay? Uh, not from simply reading. And this is the problem with the scholars. They read too much. They're not, it's not tempered with the proper concentration to be able to discern, okay? Yeah. To have the proper discrimination. Right? Mm. And, and so that's why in Mahayana, uh, all these are complicated. We simply follow a good known advisor. 
It's too much for you to be able to do all this. Okay? And, and, you, and all your good knowings, and good, all good advisors uh, teaching will help you reduce your desires, no contentment, and in particular, they will remind you that anger is what will set you back. All the blessings you accrue, you will lose them, will burn them up very quickly if you indulge in anger. It takes so long, it's so difficult for you to make sacrifices, to practice giving, and to accrue your blessings, and they'll be burned in a flash if you indulge in anger and, and um, harming. Okay. And, and this is why in this Dharma ending age, there are a lot of people who get angry very often, and too many of you are manic. It's a big obstruction to your spiritual practice when you're manic. Because you're prone to anger. And so I experimented. Actually, I, I had uh, some, some uh, uh, ex-disciples who are who who are uh, who came and they wanted to learn. I saw many of their of this particular guy, for example, he's pretty stupid. I put up with stupidity. So he offered, for example, to install the shower things on my on my on my bathtub. Pretty simple thing to install. Okay? You take measurements and you buy it and you cut it and then you put it together. Okay, and uh, it's actually so stupid that he cut the wrong, uh, cut it the wrong length. So, and so you cut it wrong, uh, you have holes and uh, will not wat be waterproof. So, <laughs> so, so I said, okay, don't worry about it. Go buy another one. I, did you learn something? Oh, yeah, I know what to do now. So he bought another one. I remember 95 bucks. <laughs> and I said, okay, if you know, okay, then, then do it. He guess what? Cut it wrong again, the same place. <laughs> Am I being cheap? I gave up, so I put a big blob of glue right there. <laughs> so it's pretty stupid. I put up with that. You know, I put up with a lot of things you know, because uh, I saw this guy is very, very manic. <laughs> and, uh, and he made a lot of sacrifices. He spent a lot of money on me. You know, doing, buying stupid things. <laughs> but anyway, I put up all that. <laughs> And because I'm hoping that all these sacrifices he's making, okay, will pay off. But, he, I, but then I forgot he's manic. <laughs> and, and he got upset at me, and he lost all his blessings. <laughs> Gone. You don't know how important this Chinese wisdom is. He says, hui jue and hai jue, meaning that you should be aware that of your anger. You know you're angry, be scared of it. Don't indulge. Doesn't matter how right you are, how wrong they are, you cannot be angry, you cannot harm others, no matter what. Okay? Uh, it's so important. So, so, so the guy, the guy is just his blessing ran out that quickly. Every time you, know, you cruise a lot of things, and you know, I don't mind. I forgive his stupidity and wasting my money and doing things, his money and so forth. But, but, uh, hoping that maybe someday with the blessings accrue, I will help him let go. But no, 
uh, is accruing blessings and getting angry, accruing blessings, getting angry. So <laughs> one step forward, two steps back because of anger. So interesting. Uh, so uh, you manic people, I have no, I can't help you. <laughs> Good luck to you. <laughs> uh, I can deal with stupidity, but I cannot help uh, when you get angry. Okay, then, uh, we have no chance. Okay, proper speech. You know, the four commas of the mouth is very important. Okay, don't uh, uh, don't uh, uh, you say the right words in particular. Do not lie, okay? Uh, Masha Shema stresses this. And this is what most people don't realize. The most harmful thing about you telling lies is that you will not unfold your wisdom. You cannot become enlightened. And this is why people in the world, they lie to each other for the sake of money, for the sake of profit, for whatever, okay, out of greed and so forth, okay. Uh, such behavior, uh, if you keep on indulging it, in it, you will not be able to unfold your true wisdom. Why is that? True wisdom is, only happens uh, when your true self emerges. And if you keep on lying to others, uh, what you don't realize for these people, and, but uh, for example, that loser there, that uh, stupid loser who has a huge temper, he lies constantly. Okay? And that's why it makes it so much more difficult. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, uh, when you lie, uh, and you, const you constantly lie, you often lie because it works. You find out it works. You actually, people buy into it. And what happens is that every time you succeed in lying to people, you actually are lying to yourself. That's why you're so convincing. You, others, others cannot believe in you. Because you must be able to convince yourself. You must be able to lie to yourself first. Okay, and that's why lying is so damaging, so dangerous to our spiritual practice, especially in the Dharma ending age. And so Master Shenhua says, don't lie, as part of his six principles. Hmm? And he found it so important that he needs to put it uh, put emphasis, don't lie, because it will not help you unfold your wisdom at all. Mm. Okay? Uh, and don't do the uh, double tongue, and get cause discord, saying one thing to one party, saying the opposite to the other, and getting the two to get into conflict. Okay? Ergo. Uh, uh, don't uh, use coarse words, okay? And that's the one thing that's interesting. Here in America, we use the coarse words as sort of a cool thing, whether it's in movies, whether it's in uh, speeches and, and normal talks and so forth. I went to Korea, I noticed no one uses coarse words here over there. <laughs> it's so weird. I, I, you know. <laughs> so I, I, it's a good thing I couldn't speak Korean because I was saying something and then, uh, and then uh, somehow I was able to manage to stop from using coarse words. <laughs> uh, but uh, but what, when I, what I typically expect to hear from the Koreans in a normal course of conversation here in the U.S., I would expect to hear coarse words from my, my, uh, my in, 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 intercolutor or uh, uh, whatever, my... my uh, the other person. But in Korea, it's just like, uh, those coarse words are not, uh, are not part of their vocabulary. See? It's the good roots. It's interesting. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, 
the uh, frivolous words. Okay. All right. So those are proper speech. Uh, proper actions. You too. Thank you, Master. YouTube question from Dustin55. Hi, Master. Is a white lie or lying to get out of a dangerous situation bad as well? Yeah, uh, up to a certain point. <laughs> Uh, it's important to make the distinction I will help you. This is, I really have a hard time explaining this to people. I'm not supposed to lie, but at work I lie. I'm a salesman, I lie, okay? Uh, I must lie uh, to sell. Uh, I must lie to manage people, okay? Because if you don't, if I didn't, uh, uh, I have massive desertion unless I'm the richest man in the world. I can't care less, but I'm not. Elon Musk, so I must lie, okay? Uh, so w how do I apply it? Hmm. And my answer is very simple, okay? Uh, in your more normal daily life, you do what you're expected to do. You're a manager, you're supposed to manage people. And you manage certain types of people, you have to lie because you offend the eagles, you have massive desertion, okay? And you're not doing your jobs. So in, in other words, we are paid to lie. That's our reality, okay? Uh, so how about this as a compromise? You pay to lie to your customers, you pay to lie to your employees, okay? Do it in moderation, don't overdo it, number one. Okay, because I hope that every time you do it, you should feel a little bit guilty. And you should rush to see your therapist and say, ah, I lied again today. <laughs> okay, and you should feel it's not normal. Okay, nothing to be proud of. Unlike some people who excel at lying better and better and better, okay? Like salespeople. And you cannot become a better salesman unless you lie better. That's their realities, okay? Mm. But let me offer a compromise to you. And I use a struggle about this. If you ask me, and say, I know, but I, my work requires me to lie. So I'm offering you compromise now. Lie all you want. How is that? But when you come to the temple, don't. That's the way I ask you. So especially doing a chan chi, don't lie. That's all. So that's what I call the middle way, okay? Lie because of your conditions requires you to lie. However, when you practice, don't. When you come to the temple, it's okay. You know, that's why that's why it's okay uh, that, that, that um, for you not to be unpopular, not to be liked, and no one likes you at the temple, it doesn't bother me, okay? We'll not throw you out because you're not popular, because no one likes you, okay? Uh, actually, I find myself uh, telling my people, say, don't push them out, don't activate them. Mm. Because, for example, in Korea, I went to Korea and observed these things. And please forgive me if I offend some of you. In Korea, I noticed as soon as a woman comes to the temple, they go in the kitchen to help. That's how they get accepted. Okay? And if you don't go to the temple or to the kitchen to help out, you don't help out, they look at you like, why are you like that? <laughs> what kind of person are you? What kind of cultivator are you? Okay? Uh, and uh, uh, it's interesting, whereas men don't have to go to the kitchen to help out. 
<laughs> I was shocked at that, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, so, uh, so be yourself, and, uh, but uh, don't lie, okay? That's important when you go to the temple. You come to our temples. Uh, if you don't lie, uh, uh, we'll eventually we'll, uh, we will be able to control our temper and uh, make you suffer less, <laughs> punish you less. But we need to work on our temper. <laughs> so hang in there, okay? Uh, so uh, that's a compromise I like to offer all of you. Uh, it's okay to lie to your wives at home. But you bring her to the temple, stop lying to her. <laughs> and that's a good compromise, I feel. <laughs> start first with uh, lie 90% less. And then when it, don't be stupid now. You don't go from 100% to zero, okay? You bring your, your, your wife to the temple, lie a little bit less, 95%. And then 90%, you know, <laughs> recondition her, okay? <laughs> Way Mountain comment. Thank you, Master, for providing that instruction. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, proper actions. Uh, proper actions here, uh, ye here, uh, first of all, uh, refers to uh, how to make a living. It's very important. Uh, if you have the blessings, you're, you'll be able to go into a field where you actually are helping instead of creating offenses, okay? Uh, for example, uh, uh, for uh, monks and nuns, for us in particular, uh, we have a certain thing called cheng ye, where we actually are forbidden from doing things, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, scaring you into submission, Okay, because we're stronger than you. We have higher level of samadhi. So quite often, uh, the Buddhist disciples are kept in check because uh, they need to be afraid of you. So we sort of like overwhelm you with our samadhi power and demand respect. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, it's, it's, it's not a good thing for us to do, okay? Or we uh, 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 do strange things uh, to draw attention to ourselves, walk funny, talk funny, dress funny, you know, and so forth. Mm. So the monks and nuns have certain things that they're not supposed to do, which is a reminder for all of us that... Um, that um, uh, that uh, you when you make a living, you make sure that you uh, do it in a appropriate ethical way. Uh, uh, because if you didn't, uh, I for example have a, a disciple recently who uh, used to own a bar. Okay. Uh, and uh, very successful at it. She made a lot of money. Huh? And uh, when you own a bar, okay, it's not called, I'm sorry, I probably lose her very soon and keep on talking about this. Uh, but I can't lie at the temple, remember? <laughs> uh, the... Um, Selling alcohol is not a proper uh, profession because uh, it 
causes you make money of people's confusion. Okay, it's very, very, very dangerous. Yeah. They come, keep on coming back because uh, they take one drink and they buy one more and then one more and one more. Okay, they get more and more confused. Okay, uh, it's amazing that she survived. Okay, because those people. Uh, some of them are pretty rowdy, some of them are pretty violent and pretty evil and nasty and so forth. So she is tough cookie. She's managed to handle all of that. So you kudos to her. Okay? And now she said, okay, enough of that. I'm tired of doing this. It's not fun. Money is great, uh, uh, but uh, it's not, uh, I don't like it. Okay? Uh, so it's, uh, so now you know, she switched and so forth and did something else and realized that the margins are not there. It's not as great as uh, selling alcohol, having a bar and so forth. Um, uh, and so, so now uh, she, she wants to try spiritual uh, pursuits. And, and because of the proper, of the improper uh, profession, proper actions here, or the proper profession, okay? Ye here could be, uh, also implies profession. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because of the improper profession, now when she tries to cultivate, she encounters a lot of obstructions. It's one thing after another, after another, after another. Okay, uh, and so, uh, so if, if you want to cultivate and become enlightened, it's so important for you to have the proper profession. Okay? Because it will catch up with you. Mm. So that's why uh, those of you who have the blessings, okay, you will naturally gravitate towards choosing the career path as they actually are helping others. Uh, are more helpful to others, such as education, okay, such as uh, uh, in the medical field and so forth, okay, mm -hmm. and so uh, so the proper proper actions matter in your path to unfolding your wisdom, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, I was uh, explaining the proper livelihood. Chen Ming, okay? Pro action is uh, don't break precepts. Okay, sorry. Okay? Uh, and uh, and uh, number six, proper vigor. Uh, so you need to apply um, yourself properly, uh, and um, you need to know how to be more vigorous properly. Okay? Uh, and that's why what uh, you do in this program is the Chan Chi or the Chan, the Chan training in particular is a training of vigor. You learn to be more vigorous. The more vigorous you are, for example, naturally, you will be able to be more productive at work. Uh, give you more energy mm, and do the proper things and avoid the improper things. Do the good and avoid the evil. That's vigor, okay? And proper mindfulness. Uh, uh, the mindfulness of uh, the teachings, mindfulness of the wise teachings. How do you practice proper mindfulness? You practice proper mindfulness by, uh, the trick here is to listen to the sages. Because if you look at the books, they all, they all, they all like a dictionary. Okay, uh, so that's why I encourage uh, uh, my students to listen to the sages. For example, Master Shenhua's teachings, not only only the the sages, but the great sages, because they have uh, will bring you to a high level of proper mindfulness. And finally, eight the proper samadhi. Um, uh, so, uh, so you, you uh, uh, in particular in Buddhist uh, samadhi development, uh, we try 
to give you the proper, the proper samadhi. Uh, whereas uh, the non-Buddhist practices or the improper Buddhist practices, they will help you develop the improper samadhi. What's improper samadhi? Is that when you are in samadhi, you give rise to deviant thoughts. Okay. Any questions or comments? Way Mountain, comment. Oh, see, I told you to remind me. It's almost two hours. We're supposed to stop an hour and a half. That's improper vigor. <laughs> YouTube question. Oh, sorry, Master. It's a Way Mountain Temple question. I put the wrong sign. Yes. Um, I could ask tomorrow if I don't want to enable improper vigor. Uh, go for it. I mean, might as well. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Master. Um, if one encounters an improper samadhi state, what do you do? What do you recommend one does? Hmm. If you have the improper samadhis, uh, uh, there are very high chances that you run into bigger trouble such as you entering demonic states, okay? Uh, so that's why uh, it happened because you have the wrong foundation, the proper views, improper views. So go back to your views, okay? Uh, these improper thoughts arise because, because uh, you have the poor foundation that will make you fall prey to it and act upon those thoughts, okay? Mm. And so go back to your foundation and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, go back and seek advices from, from uh, your good no advisor. Uh, this is when, this is critical because unless you have true wisdom, uh, you cannot depend on your self. Okay, it's funny uh, because there's a difference between uh, the, the world versus uh, the worldly ways versus the spiritual path. Uh, for example, I struggle well, my master, my Master Shinhua, uh, who encouraged his monks and nuns to go for, for PhD programs. And it makes sense for those who then later will return to lay life, that's fine. Because to, for a PhD program, they need to be certified by uh, the, uh, the committee by the people in the know, okay? And that's perfect, that's fine, in the worldly ways, okay? But for me, uh, for a monk to seek certification from lay people, inherently is something off with that, okay? Meaning that we're practicing the way of wisdom, and yet we need to be certified by unwise people, people who have no wisdom whatsoever that we understand, Buddhism. So inherently, to me, it's off. And, and I, I couldn't quite agree with it. Okay, and later, and I, I, I saw why, and I said, because uh, later some of these monks and nuns returned to lay life and they became professors and so forth. Yes, and then they can use their certification to make a living, have a profession, have the proper livelihood. That's fine. but. For the monks and nuns who still remain monks and nuns, it 
to me, it's a little bit off because, first of all, why would you need to seek certification at all? Okay, from people who have no wisdom. Number two, these people, they may know more about the vocabulary, the words, the concepts, but Buddhism is not about words and concepts. Buddhism is about your wisdom, it's about wisdom, developing your wisdom. And, uh, and uh, the people who have no wisdom cannot certify you. So that's why uh, I have, I have uh, issues with, uh, with uh, such an uh, approach. Uh, it's confusing to me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Did I answer the question? I digress a lot. What was the question again? Thank you, Master. Um, of course, with all due respect, I feel like you spoke to my question, but specifically, if I find myself in an improper samadhi-like state, what do I do in that moment? At that moment, what do you do? Uh, you have improper thoughts. Ignore it. That's all you can do. Don't act upon them. Thank you, Master. Okay. Thank you for, for listening and uh, to my rambling. All right, we stop here tonight, and thank you all for coming, and uh, we see you next time.